everything Lori Holt at Quilters Covered. This has been an exciting week at Quilters Covered. Lots has been going on with Lori Holt and we've been doing some major, major planning. So today we're going to talk about scraps. So if you've got a big bag of scraps in your sewing room, put up your hand. We all have them and we all don't know what to do, but scrap quilts are the thing. So we're going to talk about scraps today. And organizing isn't about being perfect, it's about being efficient. So being efficient in planning out your scraps is the way to make them work in any quilt that you see in magazines, books, any of Lori Holt's patterns. And she's big on scraps right now. When you do a sew along, you often have extra fabric left over from her sew along if you've purchased a kit. Or, you know, you see one of her fabrics on our, on our shelves and you go, I really like that, I want two meters. So you're like, okay, I've got two meters of this, but what am I gonna do with it? All right, we're gonna talk about that. So the first thing you're gonna do is go through all your scraps in that big bag or the more than the big bag and donate what you don't want. Like if you see like a hunk of fabric and you're like, what was I thinking? And we've all done it. Then donate it. Maybe a guild could use it or maybe, you know, offer it to one of your sewing buddies. Maybe they could use it in something like that. If it's a small piece of the scrap and it, you think, oh, what was I thinking? Cut it up into smaller pieces and we're going to talk about the sizes down the road. Cut it up into smaller pieces and when you put it into that scrap quilt, you won't notice that it was one of those ones of what was I thinking. Then you organize by color. So you put all your reds together, all your greens. Now, when you look at my organization method in my sewing room, which isn't always perfect, but I always keep my Lori Holt fabric separate from everything else. So I have brights and I have Civil War fabrics, I have Kansas Troubles, and I have Kim Deals. But I keep my Lori Holtz all together in different size buckets. And those buckets I just get at the dollar store. And I'll just show you one of these buckets. So it's this size. And you should always label your buckets. These are new buckets, so I haven't got them labeled yet, but I will, because you can just put them on your storage shelves and just pull out the ones you need. All right. You're going to press each fabric. I don't care how small it is. All right, you're going, she's crazy. I'm not pressing. So here's what you do. At night, when you're sitting in front of that TV or sitting out on the deck at this time of year, set up a little table. We all have little TV tables that we take with us to retreat. Set it up. Get your little mini iron, and if you don't have them, we have them here at Quilters Cupboard. But this is my little mini iron that I use all the time, and it goes everywhere with me. And you set up your ironing mat and your cutting mat. And from there you start. And you'd be surprised how quickly that bag goes down in a couple of evenings of doing that. And in the next couple months, there's going to be some rainy nights that you can't be outside on the deck or uh, going for a drive or a walk, then that's what you do. So you take all your pieces then and anything larger than a fat quarter, which is 18 by 20, you put in a separate pile because that you can always do lots more with a fat quarter than you can with say a 10 inch strip, right? You subcut them into smaller pieces then, and the varied sizes that I like to use are one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, five, and seven inches. If I have enough that I can get two strips of two and a half inches out of, out of my piece, that's what I do, because I always like to make sure that I have extra two and a half because a lot of scrap quilts take two and a half inch pieces. 
Now you're saying, okay, so she's got all her pieces done, but I still have this two meters of fabric. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, five and seven off that two meters and the rest, so you've taken a half a meter and the rest goes into your stash for, you can use it for borders, if it's uh, a tone on tone, a lighter color like some of uh, Lori's bee stitched fabric, then that's what you use. That's a background fabric, you use it in your backgrounds of your quilts. Okay, now today we're gonna talk one specific pattern that I'm working on right now, and it's called Acorn Love. And as you can see, I have all, a few acorns already made that we did up. Now, these are measuring seven inches by eight inches, okay? And uh, there's a few tricks to them, but it's all scrap fabric that I had in my stash. All right. So any of these are five inches. This is just uh, two and a half inches strip. And then I've subcutted it into the rectangles that I needed. The only thing that's a little out of whack are these little quick corners of brown because they're a one inch piece. So you just have to recut another one inch size, but that's easy to do. So we're going to go along and as we go along, I'm going to show you how to put this together in an abbreviated version because um, you just can't do it all on one video. I'm under a time restraint, apparently. I can't talk too much. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your five inch piece and you're going to subcut it five by five. Then you're going to take some background fabric and what you're going to do is you're going to mark a line corner to corner. All right. And you're going to lay it on there just like that. And I'm going to remove these little pieces of acorns so that you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so I've got my line and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew corner to corner and then I'll show you what the next step will be. Okay, so we're gonna sew corner to corner and as you notice, I have this little sew guide on my machine. Now this is very helpful when we're sewing corner to corner, quarter seam allowances, anything like that. And this is a Lori Holt one, it's called a Sew Guide. And we have them, um, actually they just arrived today, so we have them in blue and we have them in red uh, in the shop and they are great. You have a little piece that you cut out of here and it has a spot on it where you mark your needle and then you line that these three lines up with the cutout piece and then you got your quarter inch seam. So we're just gonna go corner to corner. And here we go. Now, normally um, in a perfect world, I would be chain piecing all of these. So I know I need 20 blocks so I would be chain piecing the 20 blocks, but we don't need 20 today. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over. And the reason I'm folding it over before I press it and trim it is I want to make sure that it's going to meet at the corner and I'm going to get an even cut and I'm not. So normally I would take that out and redo it. Just do the other one and we'll see how I make out on that. So we're lining up again. We're making sure all raw edges are meeting and we're going across side to side. And again, I'm going to just put it on the board and as you can see that one meets perfectly this one doesn't so 
When these don't meet, that means your block will be out. So you have to make sure that they meet. And I'm just going to give this a little press. And as you can see, see, now here I'm out by at least an eighth of an inch, which is not good. So, and this one is perfect. So ne then what I would do is I would get my little cute cuts, which are these little rulers right here. I would line up my stitch line with a quarter inch on the ruler and I will cut it. And because mine is down here, so I'm just going to line it up, give it a little trim. All right, so I've given that a little trim that's folded over. Now, you'll be left with these little bits. Do you keep them or not? Personally, I don't. I, these, these are too small for me to work with, okay? I have a friend, her name is Sherry, and she loves little pieces like this, but she has enough, so I don't think I'm gonna give her this. But if you were making a miniature, these would be perfect. Okay, so now we've got the bottom half of our acorn because here you can see that I've got those two pieces done. And I've already prepped a few here, so you can see how I've got them done. Okay, now we're going to put sides on these acorns. And again, another quick corner method. Okay, so you've got your acorn and the point is facing towards you and then you're going to put the quick corners on each side okay now in this pattern um, Lori called for a scrap background but I I preferred to keep it just neutral with a little bit of texture so I used the shabby fabric that we have in the shop and uh, that's what I used because it just worked a little bit better and it had a little bit of a, a brown tinge to it which set off the brown tones that I have in my in my blocks okay so all right so I'll just sew that one side and these ones you will want to pin because everything will have to be kept straight so I'm just Give a couple pins. All right, and we make everything match. Raw edges all match on the sides. Oops. Okay, and we're gonna use the seam guide again. This time we're gonna use the, the line on my right hand side, which is my quarter inch seam allowance. And we're going to just sew along there. And never drive over your pins. It's not good for your machine or your pins. And as we all know, sewing supplies are all very pricey these days, so we don't want to ruin anything. Everything is pressed out in this block. All right, so we've got our blocks going. Now you can see I've put the side on there. And of course, you can see there's two sides right there. So you want to do one on each side. And you've taken a piece like that. And I'll just show this side a little bit better. And again, you've got this little piece that you've taken, all right? And of course, you're gonna go corner to corner, all right? Now, if it's your choice, I prefer to draw the lines corner to corner so that I have a straight seam line and everything matches, all right? So I just, I use the friction pens. They're just as easy as uh, using a bow, and of course, if it's a dark fabric, you will want a white to be used, and that's where my bowen comes into play. All right, so I've drawn the line on there, sewn it on the side, and there we go.
Okay, so now we've got the sides on our block. All right, and we're going to move ahead. Actually, that would be upside down when you're looking at that. So again, we're using quick corners for the top of the acorn right here, okay? And so we're taking our rectangle and we're putting two smaller pieces on the top. Okay. So we've done our quick corners. All right, I've made sure they matched. And then I'm going to go and again, we're going to um, pin this so that everything matches. Now the one thing I forgot to tell you is that you should measure in between each seam because I seem to have a problem here. So I'm just going to show you, I'm going to move that for a minute, I'm going to move, I'm going to just check my placement here to make sure, and I should have a 5 by 4 Right. I'm just going to double check my pattern. Yep. Okay, so I know what's out then. And so again, with the top of the acorn, you're going to strip piece. And it'll go a lot quicker for you. Okay. I'm going to trim these off with my cute cut ruler. And then it'll be time to put on the top of our acorn, just like you see right here. Okay? Again, pinning. Lining up my quarter inch seam allowance. of the acorn top pieces ready and then um, you know strip piece every one of them and it goes much quicker. I'm just going to give this a little press and there we are. Okay now that little piece right there is the better part of your acorn. Now we're just going to add this little piece. So the little top, okay, and of course you've taken your brown and, and put it in between two background pieces and you've pressed it. Okay, again pinning. Okay, lining up with my quarter inch seam allowance again. Line, and away I go. I'm going to press out away from the border 
And there we go. We've got two reds showing, but that's okay. And this should measure five by six. And we are right. So five by six. Okay. So there's our acorn. Now we've just got some borders to go around and then the quick corners on the ends. And your acorn is complete. The finished acorn will of course be seven by eight and you will need 20 of them. Okay, and they will form, you can either do them in a longer table runner, so you have uh, 10 going across each way, or you make them into a square table runner. And that's what I'm going to be doing because it'll suit my table a little bit better. Okay, we're going to move ahead and I'm going to show you another pattern that we have at Quilters Covered. It's called Sugar Stars. Again, made with scraps. So I just got this, so I have to uh, get everything cut out. But again, that's another one that's a great scrap one. The latest book that came in from Lori is our Kaleidoscope book. And this is it right here. Okay. And the Kaleidoscope uh, quilt is made with three, um, three different types of fabric in each block. So you've got a light, a medium, and a dark, plus your background fabric. And you need at least 25 different fabrics to make the give it the kaleidoscope effect. So as you can see here, she has anything from grays to blues to um, pinks and purples and teals. I've got a, um, I'm gonna just do a bed runner. I don't need a whole quilt of this. So I'm just doing a bed runner and mine's got all different colors in it and it's gonna be quite effective. So, and I will be teaching this to my uh, club class, my Be Happy Club class, and if it goes okay, then we'll be maybe passing it on to a class here at Quilters Covered. Okay, now in the Kaleidoscope book, uh, she talks about using um, foundation paper by It's So Emma and using it for flying geese and half square triangles. Now, you can do it that way, but I have alternative methods that I like to use here. Uh, many of you have the wing clipper uh, ruler, so I would be using that. A lot of you have the easy angle ruler. I would be using that also. So this is a great book to have on hand. It's uh, really nice. The blocks come out beautifully, and it's a great quilt. And it, the book features three sizes, okay? Also, it gives you some pillows at the back of the book. And the other bonus that you get is a cross stitch pattern. Now, Lori has branched out into crocheting, cross stitch, and um, we've, I've always cross stitched, but I've picked up on the cross stitch. And you will notice on the backboard here, I have almost completed my Christmas one. I just have to add the embellishments, which is the buttons, and then it'll be off to the framing store. So that's a nice little addition that we can have in our homes for Christmas. This one is more neutral and you can do it in three different colors. It's your choice, whatever you want to do it in. So that's really nice. They have a pink, uh, a mustard color and a deep red in this one. So it, it's it's a fun little thing. It's great handwork. It's always nice to have handwork in the evenings when you're watching the ball game or the hockey game or just something on the women's channel. Okay, now uh, many of you probably saw that uh, Fat Quarter Shop put up a tomato uh, quilt yesterday by Lori Holt. Um, I have tried to get it. It's out of stock from our distributors. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making my own. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks we will see some progress on that. The other exciting news is um, my happy place. It has started to arrive in stores, not the fabric. We just received the shapes yesterday. Um, Tammy allowed me to bring a set down and so I'm going to be taking it home and looking at them. The other thing that is up on um, her um, blog from uh, Riley Blake 
is the sew along guide. And this guide, if you're going to do the sew along, it's nice to have because it tells you how much to cut of each different fabric. Now, we will be having kits of the stitched fabric. But you can also use your stash. Use up that stash and create that quilt. And it will deplete it in no time at all. So if you've done any other Lori Holt sew alongs, then you will definitely have an, ex an excess of stash. Okay? So that was the other exciting thing. When you're dealing with the sew along, you will notice I have this little bucket right here. Okay, and this is everything that you're going to need for your sew along, the extras, okay? Now we all have the 12 by 12 rulers and all that. And she does mention that in her um, guide, but if you have them, you don't need any extras. You will need pins. You will need her applique pins. You will need bias tape makers. You will need a quarter, a half an inch, three eighths, and one inch. So we have all those. And last time in our video, we talked about the Roxanne's basting glue. And this is what I like to use when I'm doing the applique. In the next video, I'll be showing you a little bit about the applique and how it works. And I'll be using this. You will also need the point turner. Okay, a marking pencil. There will be trim involved. And I think I got some buttons in today too. So we'll be working with the buttons. And our sew guide. So those are just a few of the things that you're going to need when you do the sew along to be prepared. Her sew along will begin on August 23rd. And each week she will come out with a new part of the quilt that you're going to do. And in the sew along guide, she has it all mapped out what weeks will be what. So you can go from there. Okay. Now, the other things I showed you were the mini irons. They are great to have around. And I really like this little bag because even though I put this in a little container, you can put all your um, items that you need for the sew along in this little bag that we got in and it says a lady never discloses, discuss the size of her fabric stash. And you never do. It's just good insulation. All right. And well, I think I've just about covered everything that I wanted to talk about today. And uh, the next video will be probably in a couple weeks or so. And I'll have a little more things done up for you. And as we go along, just watch out for different things that will be coming out. Uh, you will be seeing maybe a few more samples in the store, different things. You can also make, you see I have my little acorn block. There's the bigger acorn block. And that came out of her Farm Girl Vintage One book. So if you have that, that would be great. And uh, there will be some Lori Holt classes coming up at the store in the next couple months. All right, so thanks for joining me on this little trip with Lori Holt. We'll see you next time. Bye.